Do you get locked out often or annoyed by aliens? Maybe you need Doctor Who's sonic screwdriver. Today we'll find out if this handy dandy piece of sci-fi tech is all science or all fiction. Welcome back to Factor Fictional, the show where we look at amazing tech and science from your favorite movies, TV shows, books, and comics, and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? Last week, Phil Plate joined us via Skype only to shatter my dreams of a real-life helicarrier. Essentially, the technology is possible, but the incredible lengths engineers and scientists would have to go through make it highly, highly, highly impractical. You're still my friend, Phil, don't worry. Even if you also said the Hulk would never survive. Gosh, double whammy that episode. You know, Bruce Banner turning into the Hulk, that wouldn't work. He would basically die a horrible, cancerous death if he got exposed to that much gamma rays. I did love this comment on YouTube from Sarah Vinay about Phil's thoughts on the helicarrier. I'm an aerospace engineer. You won't have environmental concerns because, quote, the air coming out of the fans is supersonic. Rotating machinery can't go supersonic. The shock waves off the blade tips interfere with fan aerodynamics. So the supporting fans can't go supersonic, and the air coming out of it can't be supersonic either. Other than the sheer mass of air moving, you don't have to worry about environmental concerns if you're maintaining any common altitude. Hmm, interesting. I'll have to let Phil know about that one. This week, Yusef from YouTube sent me a video question that's got me curious. Uh, you know, I'm a really big Doctor Who fan, as most people are or should be. One of his most famous pieces of technology, and my personal favorite, is of course the sonic screwdriver. Uh, so, is the sonic screwdriver fact or fictional? Well Yusef, that's a good question and an even better t-shirt you've got there. But mine's cooler. Now this question is actually perfect because some of my dearest friends and co-workers are professional screwdrivers in their own right. In fact, Anthony had a Doctor Who intervention for me recently because I wasn't watching it. Are we talking about Doctor Who? Because I've actually, I've, I've never seen an episode. I don't, I don't watch it. Really? Why don't you like Doctor Who? Ah! Is somebody showing a what? clip of me on the internet? How the who did you get in here, I'm Kirby? very sensitive to when people are lavishing me. About... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to when people are lavishing me with praise. Well, it was an excellent video. Although well, I still, you. I still haven't watched Doctor Who, I'm sorry to say. What? Come on. I'm busy. I launched a new show. What do you want me to do? All right, that's too close to my face. Um, so since you're such a big Doctor Who fan, can yes. you tell me a little bit about the history of this device? Sure. So it appeared with the first doc, not like this, but it appeared with the first Doctor in an mm -hmm. episode uh, from the series Fury from the Deep. And it kind of looked like a little pen light, because that's probably what it was, because the BBC had $3.28 back then. <laughs> uh, but since then, it's been kind of modified and modified. And we're now on the Mark 7. This is the one that Matt Smith runs around with, the 11th Doctor. Primarily, what is it used for? So it's primarily used to do things like open doors or hack technology. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is, it's never really been defined what this thing does. And so it's kind of like a magic wand. So it's an issue. It's get used for everything from uh, healing wounds and medical scans to it made a space whale vomit once. That was kind of cool. As they do. Yeah. And so As it kind do. of does anything the doctor wants it to. And the only rule that Russell Davies made is you, he cannot use it to solve a problem that ends the episode. Now, how do you see it evolving going forward? Uh, you know, I would actually like to see it get pulled back down and a, down little, a, yeah, a little less powerful again. I like the idea of it um, opening locks and occasionally hacking terminals, but to kind of like pull it out and be like, well, don't worry that your arm is hurt. It's falling off. Also, I can find out exactly where he is. Like, I don't like things like that. Gotcha. I think I'm gonna have to go to a technical expert. Thank you very much, though, for the historical background. Absolutely. The screwdriver, I very much appreciate it. Uh, do you wanna take that one with you or can I hold on to it for, for the next bit? You can hold on to it. Okay, thank you. But I wanna get it back. Do you have sure. your ID on you? No. I don't know what that means. Go okay. Ahead. Go. <laughs> all right, but for all my deeply technical questions, as I said, I'm going to ask another known Whovian, Roger Chang. Thank you so much for joining me here in my humble basement. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so as Anthony said, the show isn't really too specific on the actual functions of the sonic screwdriver, but to the best of your knowledge, what can it do? So throughout the various decades of episode, it's been a Swiss army knife of tools. It's been a scanner, a welder, uh, a, a, a weapon, like like <laughs> literally spur of the moment, I need a weapon and it's been a weapon. Uh, transmat device, lock picker, homing beacon. All right, well let's focus on its lock picking capabilities. If we were to design a sonic screwdriver today, what could we use to make that possible? So one of the simplest things you could do actually is to add a lock pick 
to it. Because locks today are still primarily the tumbler type, and having a lock pick go in and you mess with the tumblers uh, would would probably be the most uh, uh, quickest way. You're, you're going way analog with yes. this thing. You're like, it should actually physically be able to open yes. locks like a, like a lock picking kit. Yes. Okay, interesting. Now, and, and not like an RFID chip or something that could open electronic doors. Now, they've scientists uh, at the University of Scotland uh, have developed a sonic uh, a tool that allows them to levi levitate a disc. So it's not beyond reason to have something that could kind of narrow band it and actually move the tumbler for you using sound waves. And I mean, it's not that weird that a smartphone, for example, could control a computer with an application if they had the right kind. I mean, we're seeing that these days. That happens more and more yeah, frequently. Yeah, I mean, uh, remote desktop applications, for example, go to my PC. One of the sponsors for a variety of shows on Revision 3 actually has a remote desktop app for iOS and Android, so you could remotely uh, fiddle with your desktop as long as you have an internet connection, and it's very conceivable to cram that functionality into a screwdriver. Now, how well it would work is a different matter because you wouldn't have the display and the user interface in order to kind of figure out where you're going. So could we combine all of these functions that we discussed into some kind of device roughly in the same in the same shape or, or size as the, as the sonic screwdriver? Uh, potentially as technology progresses, but currently I would say if you had that screwdriver, it would be more of a wand and you would have a cord attached to a bigger device. Essentially to power it, uh, the heads would probably have to be able to screw off on and, on and off for the various capabilities. Uh, but you could have it look very similar. Uh, how powerful and, and how well it would work is another debate. If these screwdrivers existed in real life, can you imagine like the increase in theft that would be going on? You could just basically walk into someone's house, unlock the door, scan all their computers, and take all their documents. That's, that is crazy. That's a lot. It is, and uh, quite rightly so. I mean, if you think about it, this is essentially every criminal's wonder tool. So a lot of the tech behind Doctor Who's sonic screwdriver really isn't that far-fetched, but we're still going to give it a fictional. As a lover of fancy, sometimes expensive gadgets, I'm actually kind of glad this thing doesn't actually exist. Uh, it would not be a good idea to encourage the invention of a lock-picking computer scanning device. Hey, do you want your mug on Factor Fictional? Send me a video like Yousef did, telling me what tech you want me to check out. Post your video response below, and if your question is tricky enough, you might just see yourself on a future episode. Until next week, I'm Veronica Belmont, and this is Factor Fictional on Tech Feed. Be sure to subscribe to see all of our new shows. See ya. Let's see, how does this thing work? Oh. Now in the movie, it's hard to tell, but it looks like it's roughly the same size as an aircraft carrier. And you can you can look that up. Those things weigh about 100,000 tons, okay? 100,000 tons.